Good afternoon. Who here is ready to hear a story? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I know. Who here really, really wants to hear a story? Ah. Um, who here really, really, really wants to hear a story? Shall we begin? Yeah, fabulous. Today, I am going to tell you an ancient Iranian story. The rise and fall of the serpent king, Zahok. Our story begins with the magnificent king, Jamshid the ruler of the seven realms of the known world. He was generous and virtuous. He had all the fairies and demons at his command, and the whole world prospered under his authority. In order to pay homage to their king, the people built a magnificent throne adorned with gold and silver and precious jewels. On the first day of spring, the demons and fairies carried Jamshid up on the throne, high into the sky and over all of the lands that he ruled. And Jamshid's majesty was revealed as a divine light, like an illuminating sun around his head. And the people celebrated that day and they called it the New Day, or Noruz. But there is more to this story. As time passed, Jamshid became arrogant with power. He believed that he is the one who created the world and that Everyone owed everything to him. Because of this arrogance, the divine light was taken away and his authority crumbled and he lost his kingship. It was not long before another power-hungry ruler was gaining control in a neighboring land. His name was Zahok, the Serpent King. And he was a power-hungry and insecure ruler. One day, the devil disguised himself as a cook in the king's court and prepared delicious and sumptuous meals for the king. Zahok was delighted with the food and told the devil, you could have any reward that you desire. <laughs> the devil deceitfully asked Zahok, if I could but just kiss the king's shoulders, Zahok agreed. But as soon as the devil had kissed the king, 
a burning pain spread throughout the entirety of Zahok's body. And from the very spots that the devil had kissed, two vicious serpents grew. Shocked, frightened, Zahok did not know what to do. He summoned all the doctors from across the land. but no one could cure him. The devil returned again, this time disguised as one of the doctors. The devil told the Serpent King, the only cure for your suffering is to feed the serpents the misery of others. So, King Zahok embarked on a reign of tyranny across all the lands. And since Jamshid had lost his power, the Serpent King easily took over and became the fearsome new ruler of the Seven Kingdoms. Jamshid's two beautiful daughters, his servants. But that did not make him happy. He called for dancers. But they could not make him happy either. He called for musicians to play day and night. But nothing could distract the serpent's hunger. Zahok's tyranny continued for a thousand years. But, as fate would have it, what goes up <laughs> must come down. One night, Zahok suffered from a frightening nightmare. He dreamt that a young warrior with an ox head mace attacked him, and no matter what he did, no matter what tricks he played, no matter what ploys he tried, nothing could stop this man until him with the ox head mace finally overthrew him. The king woke up, shivering and frightened. Immediately, he summoned the court astronomer to interpret this nightmare. But the astronomer dared not to answer him. For after three days of silence, the brave astronomer came forth and said, Soon, a baby named Feridun will be born, and he shall grow up to overthrow your rule. Enraged, the serpent king sent out scouts everywhere across the lands from far and wide in search of this baby, Fatty Doom. The 
But no matter where they looked, they could not find him. Meanwhile, in a small village far away, a woman named Faranak gave birth to Feridun. Out of fear that Zahok scouts would find her son, Faranak asked Barmoye, a beautiful cow, <laughs> to take care of her baby. So, Feridun grew up with the beautiful Barmoye as his nurse. Some time passed, but eventually, Zahok soldiers found out that a baby boy was being hidden far away in a meadow. The Serpent King's scouts found Feridun, but before they could take the boy away, Faranak rescued her son and ran away deep into the towering mountain range, but Barmoye was captured. Once there, she met a wise old shepherd. She introduced herself and her son as refugees from the king's tyranny. The kind old shepherd took Feridun in and cared for him for many years to come. Feridun grew up to become a wise young man with the strength and abilities of a fierce warrior. When Faranak had realized that the time had come, she told him of how the evil Zalhok had taken his father and his beloved cow away. Feridun, filled with a passion and a desire for justice, was ready now to fight Zahok. So, he traveled down from his mountain home to face his fate. As he approached a nearby town, he met Kove, a blacksmith. Kove was also a victim of Zahok's tyranny. Feridun asked Kove to make him an ox head mace in memory of his beloved cow. Kove agreed, and for three days he toiled on that mace. When he returned, he gifted it to Feridun, and the two of them began their journey. As they traveled, a massive army of oppressed people gathered, ready to fight the Serpent King with them. They came from all corners of the kingdom, oppressed people everywhere, ready to take a stand. However, in order to reach the king's palace, they had to cross a large rushing river called the Arvan Rud. Crossing the river seemed impossible to everyone, everyone but Feridun, 
who with his knowledge and his determination discovered a way to cross it safely. He led the soldiers across one by one by one. Until they had all made it safely to the other side. When at last they reached the Serpent King's well-guarded palace, an epic battle began! During the battle, Feridun made his way to Zahok. The Serpent King attacked Feridun. Back and forth they struggled to and fro, but Feridun was too powerful for him and struck him down to the ground. However, before Feridun could finish Zahok, the angel Sorush appeared. The angel decreed that the Serpent King's last hour had not yet arrived. Instead, he was to be imprisoned in a cave in the mountains. When the battle Finally finished, Feridun imprisoned Zahok in the deepest cave, in the tallest mountain, far, far, far away. Feridun became the new king and brought freedom to Edan. He freed Jamshid's two beautiful daughters and prosperity and happiness spread across all the lands. Faranak was reunited with her son and people came from all corners of the Seven Realms to see their magnificent new king. On the day of his coronation, a magnificent celebration called Mechrigan was held, which people still celebrate to this very day. And they all lived happily ever after. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're going to take a quick picture to commemorate this day. So everyone, can we raise the lights so we can see the audience? We're going to take a picture of everybody to say hello. Yeah. OK, we're going to take one huge selfie. Are you ready? Nope. I can't. <laughs> 
All right, ready? One, two, three, wave! Ah, oh, perfect. Thank you so much. My name is Leila. I've been your storyteller. We have Ian and Neda as your puppeteers. Hedaya and Mehdi as your musicians. And of course, our creator, Hamid Rothmanian. Thank you so much. Nooruz Mubarak.